what it is what it ain't it's your girl ombre alert and i'm back with another video i am coming to you guys live 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 okay i'm actually just getting in the house from running some errands so i just wanted to get this video done in this video we are continuing the black pioneers black history month edition and i wanted to do um a video talking about the original betty boop the original Betty Boop was and is a black woman. And I put a picture of Betty Boop, as we all know right here, just so you can compare. Like, before I get into this video, look at Betty Boop's hair. Look at the pen curls. Look at the earrings. Look at the, the body shape. Look at um, a clip of what you remember from Betty Boop's style. And just think about that being a black woman, okay? So first of all to me that makes a lot of sense but you already know if you watch my videos that i'm coming with facts not just my opinion it's going to be facts so we're going to get into it this video not only is going to be exposing the fact that the betty boop cartoon was inspired by a black woman but it's also going to expose the very first person that was caught being a culture appropriation appropriator excuse me and her name is helen kane okay so we're gonna get right into the video if you're ready to hear about betty boop the originality then you want to like this video you want to subscribe right now so let's get into it okay so esther jones is the original black betty boop and she was a jazz singer in the early 1920s um, she's best known for her song, I Want to Be Loved by You. That was one of her hit singles. She did have a couple of other hits as well to continue her career. She sang at the famous Cotton Club in Harlem in the 1920s. And as you remember from my Madam C.J. Walker video, if you didn't watch that, I'll link it below. But in that video, I discussed the Harlem Renaissance and it being the golden age for black artists and musicians and it also was the birth of jazz music so this is when all the artists was popping you know black people black flavor black spice was everywhere okay so she became famous during this time she performed all the time at the cotton club and what made esther jones so unique was that she had a signature baby like singing voice also she had a pen curled um pop and flavor she also um originated and started to scat during her songs and you all know what scatting is it's like the do 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 up the do 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 up okay that's just an example okay so <laughs> she started to do that in her songs and people loved her performances so they started coming everywhere you know what i'm saying lining up outside to come see her so as her famous hit i want to be loved by you was was everywhere around the 19 the late 1920s around like 1928 um like i said everyone loved her performances even the white people okay so back during this time we know that you know there was a lot of racism towards white people and black people there was a lot of separation you know what i'm saying so with all this being said, take that into consideration. Um, even before in the 1800s, um, <sighs> making fun of black people was white people's thing to do. Because during the 1930s, that's when the first radio came out. That's when television first made its first broadcast. And everybody enjoyed, it's, white people enjoyed, you know, dressing up in blackface and making fun of black people. So it wasn't in their not in their nature to steal from black people too so with all this being said enters helen kane and i'll put a picture of her up here and she loved esther's performance so well you know that she started to come to see her perform several times and in the theory the myth goes that she brought um her manager to see esther perform as sealing the deal as to her stealing her performance so soon after helen kane comes to see esther jones perform several times she steals her entire act yes she did she stole her swag she well she tried she stole her um her hairstyle she stole her 
her sash, she stole her baby singing voice, she stole everything about her performance. And I know you're like, who is Helen Kane other than this white lady up here? Helen Kane was an inspiring jazz singer. And I know you're like, what? Yes. Apparently she wanted to be a jazz singer, but like I said, jazz was a genre created by black people, you know, sang by black people, so it wasn't really in her nature or in her culture to sing um, jazz music, so she was an inspiring jazz singer, meaning she wasn't famous at all. She was just trying to get her shot, and it wasn't really working until she started to steal from Esther Jones, steal her whole swag, steal her culture, steal her performances. So she started an act. She started to sing like Esther Jones, dress like Esther Jones, perform like Esther Jones, and um, just as she did that, she became an overnight success. And this was around 19. Unfortunately, as Helen Kane's career became an overnight success, Esther Jones, her career started to kind of dwindle. And this was during, you know, 1928. So fast forwarding to 1930, you know, like I said, TV was making its first debut. And one thing that was also making a debut on TV was cartoons. So the animator, Max Flesher, he started to draw a cartoon that looked like Esther Jones and called the cartoon Betty Boop. And this cartoon character, this TV show, was aired um, at Paramount Studios. And at the time, Paramount Studios was one of the own film product only, excuse me, film production companies out at the time. So it became a big deal. Um, Betty Boop, as we do know, was had a baby voice, was singing, was pretty sexual for a cartoon, if you ask me. Um, I think I always was confused about be the Betty Boop cartoon because it's like, isn't it, is it an adult cartoon or is it for kids? Or it, it don't seem like it's for kids, but that's just what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? But anywho, Betty Boop airs on TV, everybody's lining up to go see it, and um, Helen Kane is pissed off, you know, her career is popping. For the first time ever, all of the things that she's been stealing is working for her. So she, when she sees Betty Boop, she thinks that it's a ripoff of her. But she, you know, the side eye to that is that she stole somebody else's shit. So somebody else's, you know, a black woman's whole performance. You know what I'm saying? So anywho, she gets so bothered by this that she actually... Um, sues Paramount Studios and sues Max Flesher, the animator of Betty Boop. So this was a big deal back in the day because nobody had ever sued a um, actual film studio before. So there was a whole big trial. She was suing the, the studio for $250,000. So this studio had just opened and it was a lot on the line you know what i'm saying they were one of the only companies out at the time so they didn't want to give them no money so they really took it seriously and they in order for them to win the trial and win this lawsuit they had to prove that helen kane was not the inspiration behind the betty boop character so it was a big deal like it was a huge scandal everyone came to to the court to see what was going to happen, you know what I'm saying? So, um, making a long story short, um, she ended up losing. <laughs> she ended up losing the trial because um, she didn't have any evidence to prove that she was the original um, Betty Boop. And they did actually, you know, they, they did actually use one of Esther Jones' performances as evidence on their side on the studio's behalf um to say that that was their um inspiration behind making the character so unfortunately you know esther jones she couldn't come to court because she was a black woman and you know black people weren't allowed in places like that but um they did find her manager and he did speak on her behalf and he actually admitted to seeing helen kane in the crowd with her manager um, at several times during Esther Jones performances. So I thought that was really cool 
that you know he stood up for esther jones even though she couldn't be there and yeah um she was really caught and i feel like that's the first time in history that someone was caught as a cultural appropriator and she did like i said she lost the trial she lost the lawsuit so she paramount didn't have to give up any money you know what i'm saying so it was a win-win for all i just wish that esther jones could have been there to you know just stand up for herself really and just be like this is my you know performance she stole my style you know just to look her in the eye and be like you know you did this to me and in a sense she put her courage helen kane put esther jones's career on hold like after that she she really didn't um perform much anymore and she was getting into trouble with the law because she was just trying to survive you know what i'm saying and and it's just sad that she couldn't even go to court and stick up for herself and stick up for her talent that God gave her. But in that, she wasn't alone either because, as I said, it was the golden age for black musicians so and artists of all kinds. So there was actual artists, um, actual writers that were creating articles on her behalf saying that she was the originator of the Betty Boop character. For years, it was you know women that dressed up in cosplay that looked like betty boop and it it always was a question of where the originality actually came from and it was a black woman okay so that's actually really cool it's like i after learning all of this i don't look at betty boop the same and i hope that you guys don't either because every person whether whatever shade you are but especially a black woman deserves to get all of her credit okay so i hope you guys like this video give me a like comment below tell me what you think you know what i'm saying and make sure you subscribe to this channel i'm ombre alert and i'm out bye